If I need to put this mic down, can you guys still hear me? No. I'll still use it anyways, just because it just sounds a little foily. Uh, but um, it's good to be with family. Did you guys know you guys have a big family? Yes, we do. Because we have an amazing father that loves us and enjoys us. And I don't know what was up here, but man, I just want to start dancing. Is it just like, is that why a lot of you guys don't want to come this way? Because all of a sudden you just start uh, dancing and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, uh, I was a break dancer back in the day. Yeah. And uh, I used to get on the cardboard. I would get into the, the circles and stuff like that and, and actually I was pretty good. Really? I was I was like the surprise in the hood. Uh, I grew up in South Sac, Sacramento, and then my, my, my dad got a, a pastoral job in Pomona at White Avenue Baptist Church and so I moved down to Pomona with my dad and uh, everybody didn't know me. And one day uh, at lunch at Pomona High, they had a DJ come and, and he's doing the DJ and stuff like that. And everybody's dancing, they're pop locking and this and that. And I didn't know anybody at that high school, but I was like, that's my jam. <laughs> and so I went out there and I did my thing. And everybody was like, oh, go white boy. Oh, they, they just went crazy. They went crazy. And what, what I liked the most, the girls went crazy. And they're like, oh. White boy. Like, yeah, yeah, here's my number, here's my pager. That's how old it was back in the pager day. You know, where I used to inscribe little numbers to, to write out different love and hello and all these you have to flip it and turn it sideways and all that stuff. Remember those codes? Well, years later, I got married. Been married 21 years, coming on 21 years. Amazing one woman of God. Uh, I went to the Set Free Ranch, and then she, she went to the Set Free Ranch, and then God called me to pastor a, a church, and I planted a church in Pomona back to reach my friends for Christ, and uh, she was crazy because she knew better, because I was already pastoring, and already starting this church, and she still married me, and I thank the Lord for that. So she surprised me in a few years of our marriage. We were broke, um, and, and we couldn't afford nothing, but she came... And said, you know, honey, uh, I won this uh, this this cruise out of Long Beach, and it's a like a two day cruise, and uh, we're gonna go. I was like, cool, man, that's cool. So I went on this cruise, and one night we're at this this uh, this club that they had had on the the cruise, and they had dancing through the decades, uh -oh. Oh, and so they started uh -oh. even so back with big band. Oh, How many guys grew up with big band? Oh, uh, you old people in here. <laughs> so it went from big, uh, big band, and then it went to the jitterbug and all this stuff. And, and my wife and I, we were trying to do it. You know, we're just doing, you know, dancing. We're just having a good time. And I look over to the left, and all of a sudden I see this old couple, and they're just jamming, and, and they're doing the the boogie woogie and he's flipping her around and stuff. And they're like 70, 80 years old, and I'm tripping, but. I went back to my high school days and I was like, y'all want a battle. What's up with this? Because now we're in the 80s. And we got the friends. Dun, 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 and the DJ's playing that. How many of us? Yeah, man. yeah some of you guys. You know, and they're, they're playing, you know, some LL Cool J and yeah. stuff like that. And I was, I'm pop locking. And I look over and the old man starts pop locking. I'm like, what? I'm tripping out on him. And I'm getting out of breath because we started with Big Band and it took a while. We're about an hour and a half in and I'm tired. And this old man and this woman, they're still going at it. But my wife and I, we call it quits. So we go sit down. <laughs> we sit down and the wife of the old man comes and sits next to us. And the old man's still getting it. He's now doing my uh, the the margarita or the uh, hey, margarita. Yeah, the, the margarita. You know, he's doing that, and he's, you know, he's doing the cha-cha slide, and, you know, Casper slide, all that stuff, and he's just going at it, and we're tired, and so my wife and I, were about to leave, and so the old lady, the wife, says, hey, can you take me to my cabin, my, my husband, this is his, his thing, he just, we grew up, we met dancing, he was in the Navy, and I met him, and 
you know, I was in my poodle skirt, and I, you know, yeah, yeah. that's all it took, and, you know, we've been married all these years, I was like, oh, that's cute, so can you, you know, walk me back to my, to my cabin, I was like, sure, and she's a little drunk, and he's drunk too, and so my wife and I, we, we go down the elevator, and I tell my wife, you know what, I'll meet you later, I'm going to help her, she's on a different floor, so there's these cabins, and you're in this tight little hall. And you have to go by all these cabin doors, and they all look the same, but just the number's different, right? Yes. So I'm like, okay, which one is it? Which one is it? As we're walking through. Then all of a sudden, she pushes me against the, the wall, and she's, she's a short little lady. In her 70s, mindless, gray hair and everything. And she looks at me, she says, you're passionate. I was like, hey, I know. I know you, you, you called it right, but... That was my wife I was with, and you were with your husband. You, you know, come on now. I, I, th I think you got to understand, you're not going to rock this cradle. And so let's go. So we start walking more, and then all of a sudden she's all, no, you got to believe me. You're passionate. You're so passionate. And I'm like, you're so drunk. Come on, like, where is your cabin? I want to go back to my cabin. Let's, you know, let's find your cabin. And, and she's like, okay, you're right, you're right. And, and we start walking and she's like, no! She like sobered up. She's like, no, you gotta believe me. We're passing it, it's right there. <laughs> John chapter 14, if you would turn to John chapter 14. Verse one, John chapter 14, verse one. What well, that made you feel bad, huh? I still think I'm passionate. Amen. I, she had you going, didn't she? How, how many of you guys are like, what? I don't understand what you're saying. Right. It's starting to connect. It's, it's connecting now, right? She wasn't saying I'm passionate. She was saying with her slurry, drunk vocabulary. None of y'all been there before, but sometimes when you're drunk, you kind of talk and nobody understands. She was saying you're passing it. Not passionate. Just to help you guys out. Just to help you out. John chapter 14, verse 1. So Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples who he has been with for three plus years. And he's 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 been on journeys with them. He's been on adventures. He's been in these these moments where it's, it's getting kind of scary because they want to kill Jesus. And there's times where they're seeing Jesus do miracles where there's food enough for just a, a, a boy who has his lunch, but all of a sudden it feeds the 5,000 plus to where they have enough to bring back. They see Jesus where the man was lowered from the from the top of the roof in front of him and, and Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And, and, and he correctly could say that, but he also said, Get up your mat and walk. And the dude who's been paralyzed all his life, all of a sudden his legs are, are able and strong enough to where he pops up and walks out with his mat. They see Jesus where there's a blind person saying, uh, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy on me as he's tr he's walking by. And, and everybody else couldn't see that Jesus was the Son of, of David, but this blind man could. And he said, Hey, your eyes are healed. And boom. They're healed. There's a man who had a withered hand and he's in the Sabbath during the, the, the church service and Jesus stretches his, tells him to stretch out his hands and his hand gets healed. And so his disciples see all these incredible stuff and then now they're about to party. They're about to get down. They're excited. There's a holiday. There's this big festival happening called the Passover. They can't wait to celebrate. They're going to see family. They're going to see all these people from all over the nations that have been scattered about. They always come back for this big celebration. And so Jesus says, hey, you know what? Let's reserve a, a, a banquet table up on the upper room. And so he's having his last meal, but they don't understand that it's his last meal with them. And Jesus is, is breaking bread with them. And he, he tells them, this is my body, which is going to be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he passes around the bread. And then he grabs the, the wine and he lifts it up and says, This is going to be a new covenant. My, my blood that's going to be poured out for the sins of mankind. And you do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And so they're like, man, this is great. This is great. This is amazing. We're having a good time. What's next on the agenda? Then Jesus says, you know what? The time's coming. That I got to go. 
They're like, oh, okay, where are we going? What, what, where are we staying at? Jesus is like, no, where I go, you can't go. But Peter's like, no, man, wherever you go, I'm rolling. You ever had somebody like that? Yeah, yeah. That is down for the cause? Even though you have a stupid cause? Uh -huh. But they're still down to ride. They're still down to have your back. Yeah. And then when you go and do something stupid, you're like, where'd they go? Yeah. That's what happened to Jesus. Yeah. Peter said, man, I, I got you, Jesus. Wherever you go, I have nowhere else to go. I've seen the miracles. I've seen who you are. I've heard your words. I've, I've been changed. I put everything aside to follow you. I quit my business, I quit my family's job just to follow you all these days. So I'm going all the way with you. And Jesus looks at him and says, look, before the night's over, cock a doo do Three times. You're going to deny me, Peter. I will never deny you. And Jesus says, man, i got to go. Where I go, you can't. Because I'm going to have to die for the sins of mankind. I'm going to have to pay the price. Just imagine you get bad news. Anybody had a good day and it's good times and everybody's partying and you just can't wait for great stuff and then a virus hits. A bad report shows up. All of a sudden you show up to the job and there's laying, laying off everybody. Or you, you're excited about to have a baby but you have a miscarriage. You're about to have a good time and all of a sudden you hear that your, your, your mom has cancer. You're, you're excited you're going to do this and all of a sudden a car accident shows up. Just disruption. It hurts. That's, that's the mindset of these disciples. They're hurt. They're like excited. They're like, whoa, whoa wait, what? Oh, Jesus. Jesus never lies. Jesus always speaks truth. What He says comes to pass. And so what He's saying it has to happen. And if that's the case, this is serious. Jesus is, is saying he's going to have to go to the cross, is what he's saying. All right. And later on, just a couple hours later, he's already in a false trial being whipped and scow uh, picked on and punched and, and, and locked up and then dragged around and, and losing sleep, not able to eat and being weakened and weakened wherever he would go because he's losing blood. And that's not enough for these idiots, these fools. Not understanding that Jesus is the Messiah, they keep on punishing him to where they put him on a cross. In between, Jesus knows that this is going to be hard for his disciples. Jesus knows that the world is not easy. Jesus knows life is not comfortable. It's not just a bed of roses, but we also know roses have what? Thorns. No, they have bees and they have bugs. No, yeah, you're right. They have thorns. <laughs> They have thorns, and if you don't, if you don't handle it right, you're gonna get hurt. Yep. Life hurts. Yes, it does. And so Jesus says something to them that is uniquely special to those that He loves, and I want you to hear it as He's saying it to you, because I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your situation is, but we all have situations where we get disrupted and we need comfort, right? Right. We have people that try to talk to us and say stuff, but it, it don't matter. I found, but when Jesus says it, it matters. When Jesus says it, it does soothe. It does bring that peace. And so Jesus tells his disciples, I know I just gave you some, some troubled news, but he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My father has many rooms. Everybody say many rooms. Many rooms. Good. If there weren't, or if there were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place? For you, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Amen. You know the way to the place where I am going. Amen. Jesus says, hey, don't trip. That's pretty much what he's saying. Hey, don't get worked up. Don't, don't get confused that this may look dark. This may look bad. This may look really bad. Awful. No hope. But have hope. Why? Because you got to believe in God, but also believe in me who has sent me to do this. Right. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Yeah. I'm going away. And I'm preparing a place for you. And what is cool is he's preparing not a mansion. He's preparing a room. 
I don't know about you, but I hear a lot of people wanting their mansion in heaven. That's cool because I don't have one here. But I want to be in the room with Jesus. I don't want to go far away on the hill in heaven. I want to be right there with Jesus. And so he's got many rooms in his house. I want to be in his house. I want to be in his house. I want to be hanging out with Jesus when I go to heaven. And so he tells us he's preparing a room. Many rooms for us. Meaning there's going to be a plenty room. But you got to understand the only way to him... Is through believing in Him. Amen. And so He says, you know the way. The place where I'm going. He's He's been with these guys. And He tells them, you know the way. But check out Thomas. Good old Tom. Thomas said to Him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus says, man, you're, you're slow. No. <laughs> like, really? Like, are you kidding me, Thomas? No, he doesn't say it that way, but he kind of says it this way. Well, he doesn't say kind of. He says it this way. I am the way and the truth and the life. Right. Jesus tells him, I'm the direction. Today, on my phone, I have an app that gives me directions, and it's called Waze. Of all things. Waze. I love Waze. You know why I love Waze more than all the others? Because people report when there's a cop ahead. That's right. <laughs> That's the only reason I like it. Awesome. Awesome. Other than that, it's like whatever. But I got I to gotta follow the direction. I got to follow the way to get to the destination. So Jesus, he describes himself as the way to get to the destination. Amen. He says, I am also the truth. I'm not going to lead you astray. I'm not going to, you know, kind of, you know, lead you with a carrot and then, you know, all of a sudden trap you with something. But he's going to be truthful. He's not going to, you know, uh, well, I don't know if you can handle this. No, he says it truth. He says, I'm the life. I'm the one that gives life after death. I'm the one that gives life now. A lot of people want a ticket to heaven. A lot of people want to be sure if they die today, they would go to heaven. And that's a good thing, right? Right. We should all want that. And if you're in this room and you're not sure of it, tonight you can be sure of it by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, rose again on the third day, to take the penalty of your sin. Amen. To where you can, by yeah. His way, go into heaven because He's going to tell you the truth. Right. And He wants to give you life. Amen. But He doesn't want to just give you a destination. In heaven, He wants to give you life now. He wants to give you life now. He wants to show you how to live today. He wants to show you the truth. That way you're not getting bamboozled and trapped and, and confused and lied to as the world does. There's a lot of people that are get over on you. Jesus ain't here to get over on you. He's trying to get you over what you're going through. He wants you to be an overcomer. He doesn't want you to get trapped. He wants to set you free. Amen? And so He also wants to give you a life. What kind of life? Abundant. What's that mean? More than you deserve. He wants to give you a lot. But sometimes we don't want it. Because we don't think we deserve it. And you know what? You're right, but you got to listen to the truth. He says you do deserve it by grace. You deserve it by my mercy. You deserve it because I created you. You deserve it because I love you and you're my child. And I found out Jesus spoils. He does. He, he gives me life each and every day. And I'm just sometimes like, Jesus, you, you just go overboard. I don't deserve what you give. Life, grace is enough. Right. I'm just thankful I, I am now a citizen in heaven and that I've been adopted into your family. I'm thankful that you're my father. I'm thankful that I can talk this way to you. I'm thankful that I can come to you Amen. when I'm going through some burdens, when I'm going through some struggles. I'm thankful. You're enough. So Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It ain't through your mama. It ain't through Set Free Church. It's not because you went to the ranch. It's not because you're clean. Not because you're an American citizen or not. It's not because you're a Jew or a Gentile. It don't matter about all those things. He says, I'm going to clear it up. There's only one way. You know all, all roads lead to heaven, right? Yes. We know that. We know that for a fact. 
But once you get there, you can't go any further because it's only through Jesus. We're all going to die some way. We're all going to get to that to that destination of the judgment seat. And when we get there, it's either you get to take the penalty of your sin or Jesus says, no, I bought that one. I've covered that one with my blood. That's mine. I, I, I purchased that person through my death on that cross. Yeah. You guys following this? Yeah. So, no one comes to the Father through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know Him and have been seen Him. And there's another guy in this crew that says something that's like, what? Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus is like, come on, man. How, haven't you been hanging out? Right. He doesn't condescend that. He understands that we're simple people. I've been in church growing up, and I still didn't get it. Anybody else? Yeah. You've been under the Word. You knew the truth, but you still went for the lie? Yep. Philip, he's hanging out with Jesus. Like physically, boom, right in his face. Like God to question him and feel the breath of Jesus when he answered. Wow. That's amazing, right? But he still didn't comprehend. So take it easy on yourself if you don't comprehend it enough. And that's why we come to church. That's why we get in the Word. That's why we praise Him. That's why we pray to Him. That's why we fellowship to get... Man, there's times where I'm still a knucklehead. And I've been serving Jesus for 25 plus years now. And I still am a slow learner. Am I in the right class? Yeah. Cool. Because I feel comfortable enough to say... I would be just like Philip and say, wait, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean I don't need to sin no more? Because I've been bought and purchased and I'm a new creation in Christ. What's that? Huh? huh? Yeah. I get a lot of huhs all the time. Jesus answered, do you know me, Philip? Singles him out. You can put your name in there. Do you know me? That's a good question from Jesus. I wonder if Jesus is asking you, do you know me or do you just know me through somebody else? Or vicariously through somebody else? Or, you know, I have him on my, my Facebook friends uh, list. And you've never met each other. But all of a sudden you're just adding things. You're just adding little vocabulary that you heard at church. You're adding a sermon that someone preached. But do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, Jesus said one day with him is like a thousand years. Ooh. If you've been at church and it equals up to about 24 hours collectively, there's no excuse for you to say, I didn't know Jesus. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, 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 I wish I had a chance to know you. I'm sorry I didn't receive you. I'm sorry I didn't repent. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But I just didn't know enough. And I just needed a few more. I just needed to wait a little longer to receive you by faith. Right here. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in I that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Jesus has proven that he is the Messiah. He's proven that He fulfilled all the prophecies. Even with His uh, birth, He wasn't even able to tell Mary, okay, Mary, uh, you're going to have to get on a donkey and head down to Jerusalem. you got to go to Bethlehem. You're, you're going to have to you know, understand that uh, there's not going to be any room in the inn, and so you're going to have to you know, give birth to me in a manger and you're going to have to put me in there and there's going to be these angels that are going to be woken up to the fact by by these angel and uh, heavenly hosts that are going to disrupt them and scare the bejeebies out of them while they're shepherding in the field and I'm going to uh, blast them and tell them look you're going to find 
the Messiah laying in a manger. Yes, God. These things all being prophetically said years later, and Jesus fulfills them all even at his birth. And then as he fulfills his scriptures, as he's he's been betrayed, and when he was when he died on the cross, not one bone was broken, and, and how he raised from the dead, all these things had to be fulfilled. And so Jesus says, Look at the evidence. Look at the works themselves. Just check them out for yourself. Not just in the Bible stories, but even historic writings and other witnesses have penned the things that Jesus did and they're tripping out on Jesus. Jesus is enough. Jesus' evidence is enough, I would hope, to convince you that He is the same as God the Father. Amen. He just, he just continues to, to make sure because he wants them to get it because he's he's about to die. And that's frightening for them. And so he takes his time to to be clear with them. And so he says again in verse 12, Verily, very truly I tell you. He just is like, guys, I really need you to pay attention to this. I really need you to get this. I need you to understand this. Because who knows? Tomorrow's not promised. You need to get this. And so he tells them. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. And I would have said, Jesus, time out. You're tripping. You're saying that we're going to do even greater things than you? That's wild. What do you mean? Because you healed the blind. You raised the dead. You walked on water. You, you multiplied fish and, and loaves. This, Jesus, we can't do that. He says, you are going to do it. Right. And the reason for this is because I'm going to the Father. You're going to do greater things. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to be great. I was inspired by watching Superman the first time. I watched Rocky and all these other movies with inspirations of wanting to be like I remember Michael Jordan and the, the song, I don't want to be like Mike. Right. You know, you want to be something great. Right. Well, Jesus is like, look, you're going to be great. Hallelujah. Everybody else tells you you're not to amount to nothing. You're, you're a loser. You're, man, come on. But Jesus is like, no, I know you're great. And the only way you're great is because I'm going to be in you. Right. And I'm going to the Father. And because I'm going to the Father, you're going to do great things. In verse 13, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Yeah, Let me clarify this. It's not like, hey Jesus, I need uh, about $5 million in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and then you're like, hey yeah, I got it. Boom. It's not like that. Nope, You're going to do the great works that he did. Amen. What did he do? He came for the, the, the oppressed. He came for the overlooked. He came for the foreigner. He came for the one that was, was picked on. And he brought them to life. He brought them peace. They brought them to, 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 to rise up with honor and with love. And God's called us to do the same. I love the family of Seth Free because we get to do that. We get to rise up the ones that most people would not even touch or care for. That's right. But overlook. Go on, feed you me. ask me whatever for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. We, we love that Jesus died on the cross, don't we? Yes, we do. We love that he rose again. Yes. We love that he's preparing a place for us. Right. We love that he's coming back for us. But what about his commands? Amen. Hallelujah. I love this. Oh, you're the only one because they're tough. Yeah, they <laughs> hey, love my enemy. What do you mean? Yeah. Right. Lo love the one that 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 has 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 talked bad about you, have hurt you, have destroyed you, have lied about you. And Jesus says, "Yeah, that kind of guy, that kind of woman, yeah. that kind of parent, that kind of friend, that kind of whatever stranger." You gotta love them and pray for them. And I'm like, okay, I got a prayer for them. Get them, Jesus. <laughs> but He wants us to love them, love them, 
If you love me, keep my commands. We got to keep them. We got to hang in with them. I don't know about you, but it's tough. Man, I, my, my, my dead guy 25 years ago still kind of taps me on my shoulder and says, Hey, can I, can I cut in? Can I, can I have this dance? Can I have this round? Can I, can I show up and mess you up again? Nope. And I got to be like, no, because I got to live by his commands. And his command is to love thy neighbor. That's right. My com his commands are, you know, to, to care for people, to serve and to care. That's right. 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you. And will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He's put a deposit in us. The Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit bears witness of when we're living selfishly or not. And it brings conviction. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to convict. The Holy Spirit convicts. And it tells us, is this right or wrong? How many of you guys need all the help you can get? Ooh, I sure yeah. do. And it's cool because Jesus helped us become in the family. Then He helps us with the Holy Spirit. Then He helps us with His Word to where we can understand His commands. He also has given us the body of Christ. He's given us the church to where He has allowed the church to help each other out. Iron sharpens iron, so does a man to another. We need each other. Right? I need all the help I can get. Amen. I'm addicted to church. I am too. Amen. I'm addicted to the Word of God. I'm addicted yeah. to praying. I'm addicted to worshiping Him. I, I'm not addicted to His commands. <laughs> if I was, then I probably wouldn't need church. I wouldn't need to read. I wouldn't need to pray. I wouldn't need to worship Him. But I need to stay plugged in. Right? He says, I'm the vine. You are the branches apart from me. You can't do nothing. We need fellowship. We need to be engrafted into the body of Christ and be with each other and, and hang in and hold on to Jesus. That's right. I know some people that are sharp with the Word of God. I know some people that can outpray any of us in this room. I know people that have done and seen miracles happen. I've seen people see restoration and family and, and get their house and get this and get that. And you know what? I don't see them anymore at church. No, nope. Really? I don't see them serving Jesus anymore either. Oh, that's horrible. That so it's, it, it, it can happen to the best of us, yes. is what I'm saying. So we need to hang in there. We need each other. Jesus is telling us, man, it's going to be tough, but I'm going to send the comforter. I want to send the Holy Spirit, the advocate. I want to send the one that's going to be in court when you're going through it. Thank you. And who's going to stand up and testify, no, that's my kid. That, that's, that's mine. That person belongs to Jesus. So hands off him, Satan. Yes. Hands off him, demons. Hands right. off him, world. That's right. We need to know who we are and whose we are. Yes. That brings freedom. Yes, that brings peace. That brings oh, man. where you, you're like, oh, this is a thing I'm just passing by. This, this is just, whoop, missed yeah. me on that. That, that was a close one. Close. That almost yeah. took me out. Boy, I was stressed on that situation, but the Holy Spirit told me it's going to be okay. Amen. This is going to help me grow. This is maturing. Amen. You know what? Maybe that was something I didn't need. And I was chasing it big time, and God prevented it, and I'm mad, but you get over. I know who I am, and I know whose I am, yep. and I know who loves me, and so maybe... He just helped that go by because it was full of garbage. It was full of destruction. It was going to burn up. I'm telling you, I've, I've seen some stupid stuff and I've done some stupid stuff. So we need to, to abide in Christ. We need to continue to listen to His Spirit. We need to continue to, to do His commands. Amen. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love, him too. I love Jesus. And, and you know what I find later? Is that that command that I didn't think I could do? You did. And I, then I did it? I was like, Woo! <laughs> wow, that was lovely. Yeah. That yeah. was actually sweet. Yeah. When I had to forgive family, I didn't think I could. But when I did, it was sweet. 
You know what helped me forgive? I've been on this tangent lately, the last couple, uh, like all last year really, about forgiveness because I've had some beef in my family. And uh, it was about things that happened way back in childhood days that we brought up in our 40s. And I'm like, why are we holding on to something back in the 70s, 80s? That's, that's trippy that this has had a stronghold all these years. And so I realized I needed to forgive. And when I forgave, ooh, I was released and it feels yeah. good. But what helped me to forgive is that if I can't forgive someone that I can see, I'm telling Jesus, you, you died for that. You're, you're stupid. Why would you die for someone like that? You don't know better. God's an idiot for dying on the cross for all. And that person is included in that all. So I'm putting myself above God that I know better than God. And that when I thought through that, it made me sick to <laughs> yeah. think that way. Yeah. yeah. That how dare I think that I'm bigger than God to where I can't forgive someone because Jesus, well, I come to him as messy as I am, and he's like, I love you. Yeah. You confess it, they're forgiven. Right. That's that's all? Not by works, I don't have to do this and jump through these hoops. You just forgive me by my confession? Yep. He's like, yep. And I need you to confess that you forgive that person, even if that person is dead. Even if that person's not even around. You need to forgive because you're given free space. Actually, it's not free. It's expensive space in your mind. That's filtering into your heart and getting you in this mood and getting you all, ugh, and it's unhealthy. And I don't know if you realize, but your physical and your spiritual, they connect to each other and they can get you sick, get you droggy. Get you all depressed and, and, and angry and all these other modes that come out physically that destroy you. And Jesus is like, I, I want to give you life and life abundantly. So you need to believe in my promises and what I say is true. And that I'm the life and the way. So Jesus tells his disciples, I got to go. But I'm not going to go and abandon you like an orphan. You're mine. I'm still going to be with you and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you. And so when I go, there's going to be more, more of me in you, which means in, it's going to just not be Jesus doing it all. All of us get to do it. Amen. And He says you're going to do greater things. Trip out on that. And so why is it that we're not seeing that? It's because we don't believe the truth. Right. We don't believe what Jesus says right here. If we believe what Jesus says, then let's keep His commands. Yep. Let's start loving the unwanted. Right. To overlook the ones that most people don't want to mess with because they're like they're too deep in their sin, they're too crazy, they're too out of their mind, they're too they're too late, too late for that person. No, never. But Jesus never is like, no, let's let's minister to that person, let's set that person free, and we know that Jesus would speak life, and they'd be healed. Right. Jesus didn't go over to the paralytic man and put his hands all over his his joints and start to rub his muscles and make sure his tenants were all lined up and then say, okay, now you can walk. He just declared it. Stand up. Take up your mat and walk. We need to start declaring the good news to declare his truth over people's lives. Yep. Over the blind. You see a blind person? I had someone prophetically tell me when I was being ordained, right before I was being ordained, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear stories of you uh, laying hands on the blind. And they recovered. And he, he spoke that as my dad's Sunday school teacher, an old cowboy. And I, I remember him speaking that as he's what he, he spoke that in my ear, and then he washed my feet. And it was a powerful moment. It was, it was strange, but I believed it. I said, "Let's go for it." And so when there's a blind person around, I'm like, "Oh goodness!" No. <laughs> I'll be real. Oh no. But let's do this. Let's go. And I prayed for many blind people. Have they all seen? No, but ha some have. Amen. I wouldn't see the some have if I didn't go after it. I've seen my, my homie Richard who got shot and, and, and it went through the his back and it paralyzed him. And it, 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 it severed his, his nerves in his back and, and he, was, he was paralyzed. I was at the ranch when he got shot. And when I found out about it, I just read about the paralytic man that was lowered and Jesus said, your sins are forgiven and take up your mat and walk. And so when I went to go visit my dad in Pomona, I went to his house 
to go see him because I couldn't believe it. Because he was a he was a dancer in the crew I was in. He was an amazing basketball player, ath athlete, and everything. And and so when he opened the door, actually his his mom opened the door. And he, hey, Mijo, uh, go back there and see Richard. I'm like, wow. It broke my heart. So me and my brother Robert, we start talking to him about Jesus and we pray for him. And then we, we, he gets in his wheelchair and he starts to roll out as we go to my, my dad's car that we're borrowing. And um, I was like, hey, I want to pray for your legs to get healed. He's like, what? I said, man, I'm, I'm new to this, man, but I believe Jesus. And I just heard this story about Jesus healing someone who was paralyzed. And so if Jesus did it then, why not? He's like, all right, let's do it, homie. And so I pray for him. I'm like, all right, um, I, I think you're supposed to get up now. <laughs> and he's like, nothing happened. And I was like, all right. And so we left. A couple weeks later, I get a call from uh, another friend, Danny. And he's like, hey, did you hear what happened to uh, Richard? I was like, yeah, I got shot. He's like, no, no, no. The dude has feelings in his legs. When the doctor said he would never feel them. Oh, I was yeah. like, you're tripping. He's all, no, bro. You need to call him up. So I'm like, hey, Richard, what happened? He's all, man, I was I was in my, my bed, and he had a medical bed in his room now. And he's in the, he, This is back in the VH, VHS tape days. And he's all, I went to reach over something, and all these VHS tapes that were on the shelf fell on my, my legs. And I'm like, ah, man, that hurt. And then it came to his head. Oh, my goodness, it hurt. Yeah! He got excited. He's all, Mom, Mom, Mom. And his mom came in and he's like, I, I felt these fall on my. She's like, Are you sure? And so they went to the doctor. He tells the doctor what happened. And they're like, Oh, you know, that's phantom pains. That's what that is. And he says, You know what this is? You're fired. <laughs> so he fires his doctor and he goes to another. And the doctor says the same thing. He says to the same thing that he said to the doctor, You're fired. He goes to another doctor, and the doctor is saying, you know what, it's a trip because he's showing them the x-rays. You have a gap between the, the, the nerves, and this is tripping, tripping me out. But we're going to study this. And he's like, my friend prayed. He's like, okay, that's cool, but we're going to study this. <laughs> so fast forward, he's walking. He has dystrophy, his, his legs dystrophy, where it's real skinny from not moving so, so much, the muscle strength. But today, he's walking. He, he has a cane, but he is walking. I say this to inspire someone in this room, that you may see someone who's sick. You may see someone who's paralyzed. You may see someone who, who, who can't see. You, you may have a, a person that has cancer. You may have someone who, who, who has broken something. You need to pray. Pray to Jesus. Jesus said, you're going to do great things. You could be the great thing. You can do great things. It's not Pastor Jesse, not me. I wasn't a pastor back then doing this stuff. You, a follower of Christ, have the deposit of the advocate with living within you. And you're being obedient to God. You're, you're, you're loving His commands and you're loving Him. And so you're going to do that out of love. Not like, oh, let me see if this works. If you're doing it for that... God might do it because He loves that person and just mess you up, but it'd be great if you get fired up for Jesus and you're like, I want to see great things in the days that I live in. I want to see God change San Bernardino. I want to see God change my household. I want to see God change my, 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 my brother that, man, he's way out there. Nobody, everybody gave up on him. you got to believe. Why? Because someone believed in you, someone shared the gospel with you, and you're here today. That's how it works. Amen. How, that's how it happens. We go out. We demonstrate the love of Jesus to people and they come in. I'll wrap it up. If you are not in the family of God, if you haven't confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're kind of, man, I don't know, if I die right now, I'm not going to go to heaven. I know I and you am. can say that because you know who you are and what you've been doing. And it's not right with God. But God loves you anyways. For God loved you while yet you were still a sinner. Yes. He died on the cross for you. He didn't wait till you got it right. He died for you. And He knew today you'd come. Right. And today you need to come forward and ask Jesus in your heart to be your Lord and Savior. To where you're sealed 
and redeemed by His blood. If that's you tonight, I want you to come forward. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes, stuff like that, because you should not be ashamed. This is a church. Kind of weird if you're in the club or somewhere else, you're going, hey, the homies might see me. You're, you're around people that want to see you get saved. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to stand up and come up here, and we're going to pray for you. Amen. 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 Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else that, man, I, I, man, I need Jesus. Amen. I need Jesus. Come on. I, I, I want only the ones that are not sure yet. Now, I know there's some people that just want to keep coming up here. That's cool. But let's identify those that are born again for the first time. God bless you, brother. Sister. God bless you. Come on. Are you up here to support? Praise God. Let's do this. All right, anybody else? Let's say this. Let's say this prayer. Mean it from your heart. You're not talking to me. You're not talking to anybody in this room. You're talking to God that loves you, who is filling this room right now and wants to dwell in you, and He's going to fill you with His Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, sister. Say this prayer. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. I've done wrong. I know it. I know it. You know it. You know it. Others know it. Others know it. And I'm so thankful. And I'm so thankful. That even though. That even though. I did it. I did it. You loved me. You loved me. You demonstrated. You demonstrated. Your love. Your love. By dying on the cross. By dying on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. I believe. I believe. That you were buried. That you were buried. But on the third day. But on the third day. You defeated sin. You defeated sin. And death. And, and you rose again. And you rose again. I ask you. I ask you to write my name. To write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. For when I die. For when I die. I know. I know. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I ask. I ask that you fill me. That you fill me with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. The Advocate. The Advocate. The Promised One. The Promised One. To help me. To help me. To live out. To live out. The commands, the commands that you've asked for me to live. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read the Bible best as I can. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. And I'm going to thank you. And worship you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Jesus, I love you. I thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Now, I pray, Lord God, that you use them in mighty way. To, to reach their friends and, and to not be ashamed of the gospel, not to be ashamed that they are now Christians and followers of Jesus Christ to where they can confess that to their friends at, at the house or at work or in the neighborhood, the, the places they go to, to shop, wherever they go, may they say, do you know Jesus? Do you know where you're going tonight if you die or today? They can, you can have faith in Jesus and he'll get you to heaven. So Lord, I pray that they be uh, just blabbers for Jesus. Yeah. And I thank you for this church. Play. I pray blessings on Pastor Jesse and, and Jolly and the leadership here and, and the, the members and the community that comes here. And I pray, Lord God, that you just keep on shining through this, this place. I pray, Lord God, as they have uh, a heart to hit the streets and as they go walking around and passing out food and flyers and doing all kinds of great adventures. Let them be excited to be ready to see you show up and do 